Hey everyone, this is Evgeny, and in this video, we are checking together how you can optimize and automate your work using AI agents. All right, in general, what's the problem we are trying to solve today? And uh, I opened the project in IntelliJ, and this is a classical uh, Spring Boot Java project. This is a web application, it's a task manager from the uh, exercise from our previous videos. And uh, just imagine, uh, this is something we, we are working as a team in a company and there are multiple people doing something in the project and so there are multiple tasks you're trying to perform, right? So, for example, uh, you probably most of the time you're coding and you would like the AI to help you with that. Uh, from other cases, you are maybe writing integration tests and this is a completely different area of what you're doing, right? And maybe even sometimes you only have to think about the architecture of this application and, and check different approaches you would like this architecture to evolve. So uh, the point of what I'm saying here is that even as a single developer working on a project, you're wearing different hats what you're doing with the project. And this is the problem because uh, the current way how you can operate with that, you have an AI, uh, AI agent, for example, and you're trying to put your problems there. And it could be either bigger, bigger, huge, really prompt, or it can be uh, like a dialogue, so a very short question, short answer, question again, and you're trying to direct the AI to the proper direction. But in general, this is really problematic because it's different roles, and now I will show you how you can combine everything in one place. So what's the idea? I will be using Cloudy Code today, and I open it in the terminal. This is the only way how you can do it, and I put it, uh, the terminal window to the right-hand side to simulate the normal chat dialog with AI agent because we're all used to that already. So let's start cloudy and it's there. Well, I need to make it bigger, otherwise it's broken. And uh, if you only start working on something on this project, for example, then you have nothing like the cloudy has zero knowledge about your project. And the recommended way here is to initialize the project and we can do this. And what's happening under the hood, it's uh, uh, Cloudy itself uh, here is in a genetic application, so it has a lot of tools, it can follow the ideas, it can do the tasks. And what's happening now, it's researching your project through and uh, collects some basic information which goes to a context. And this is, if you watched my previous videos about uh, Cursor AI, for example, or about uh, Windsurf, then you might know that it's kind of this global set of rules we have or specific for projects, but it's something like you are preparing information that you are putting this information to the context, right? And so we are here, we have this uh, cloudy MD file and it's not here yet, but it's been prepared. And the basic idea for this tool at least that uh, all these global kind of rules, they are put, they can be put to the cloudy MD and every single request, this file will be read in the context of the AI agent and then kind of it helps the guide the agent to the proper direction. And this is interesting thing because normally it works like a charm, but since we are on the recording and everything is visible here, then it stopped working, right? You can see it here. That's the usual way when you're recording something. Uh, sorry for that. I will stop it and run it again and uh, we'll see how it works next time. Second time, I mean. All right, it seems we are there, the file is ready, we can review it and accept at the end, and this is the idea. And here we are, if we open it here, we can check what's inside, let me close this one. So what's there, it's kind of a list of global rules which would help Cloudy in the future when processing it. And you can stop here, this is the expected way how you would communicate with the AI agent thing. Like we have uh, some code style guidance, uh, probably it's needed when you're, when the cloud is going to change something, uh, there is a how to build, run and check and some basic information and you can add probably something on your own. But uh, the key point we need to take here is that uh, by design, the cloud on every request it reads this file, or maybe when you start a new session, it reads this file and takes it as a context and we can reuse this feature because we want to create a list of instructions which are read on every new session automatically. And at the same time, we are going to keep this style because it's kind of providing a context for the project itself. 
And it's very interesting, maybe it was a couple of updates of cloud because I'm pretty sure when I started only working with the tool, it was generating me the not the rules but more the description of the project like kind of which classes are there uh what's the structure etc like technologies maybe now it's a bit different so probably it's uh, it came with the new update but anyway we are keeping this as a memory as a global rules and we are trying to apply the different approach right where when when here we are putting uh instructions what or which way the cloud should go and what we are doing, I have prepared already initmd here, so you're not wasting your time uh, watching me typing something, very lengthy thing. And this is what we have. Let me let go through it together. So uh, we have several steps, right? And in general, we are saying this agent is designed to work on Maven-based Spring Boot Java Web app. And uh, using this is very important dynamic and role based behavior. So, this is our goal. We would like to pick the specific role we are, when we are doing specific tasks on the repository. So, what we are doing, the step number one, we are saying, okay, there is a role discovery. And we are saying there is a folder, uh, roles. And in this folder, there are a number of files, and every file represents a specific project role. And we ask the LLM or model to first read all the file names from the folder, then extract every single file and uh, read every single file, I mean, and extract the, the role from the file and then show these roles to the user as numbered list and ask, uh, pick the specific role. And then wait, just wait for the user to, to decide which role should be taken. And also we have some guard here, like if uh, the number is not existing, so that's clear. We are just uh, cycling here. We are going back and asking the user again to provide the proper role. Uh, once, we know, once we know the role, we have the role activation section at number one, number two step now. And we're asking to load the context of the role file and use it as active role context during the whole session. And uh, this information should be used uh, to guide all the actions, uh, define tone, define score, behavior in the whole section. And so when we have that, we also ask, you know, okay, we have to, in parallel, we have to load uh, the global project description. And this is meant the cloud AMD that we just created. So this is kind of general information about the project. And this should be combined to our previously loaded role description. And just for us, for usability, we're asking the next step, number four, just to confirm that the role was picked and provide some summary, saying that, okay, I'm using this role, and in two, three bullet points, describe the general idea, like uh, the I, what's going to behave in this way, right? And some important notes at the end that uh, this setup should happen on every new session, and if uh, no role is selected, then we need to ask, AI needs to ask the user to pick something and behave always corresponding to the role loaded, right? So what we have to do, uh, probably you know this already, we need to do two things mainly before we start. First, we have to have the project rules and I said this is our cloudy MD file, so we are renaming this one. I'll put the name here and I'm renaming the file. And then we are renaming our initmd to cloudmd, so it's automatically taken by cloudy on every new section. So we do the renaming here, I will close this one. And if you are interested in the roles, we have at the moment, I said it's in the roles folder and it's here already, I prepared it as well. And at the moment we have three roles, we have an architect, a developer and QA specialist. And uh, this is a key thing, right? Because being a QA specialist, probably you're not modifying. Uh, let me let me let me open it to show you. So we have responsibilities, knowledge, technology, scope, sections, some restrictions. This is very crucial and important here. And uh, testing style and guidance and collaboration guidance. So, for example, being a QA specialist, uh, you are not allowed to modify the product code. A very important thing, right? Or, uh, but we, we are saying still anyway, like we do not modify, but we are saying anyway that if you feel the code is really wrong here, you may leave a comment that this class is hard to test due to something. And we're making it familiar with different test concepts and all these kind of things. And uh, the link to this task manager, you will find it in the description of this video so you can check roles on your own. Maybe you can take something if you find it really helpful for your situation and so on, right? 
And we do have a developer whose responsibility to really code and with some knowledge, uh, technologies and what should be done should not be performed as well. And we are saying uh, again, for example, if this is not related to developer, there is still, still, still possible to make a to-do comment saying that this is wrong from his perspective, but don't uh, modify, don't change the architecture, for example, right? Etc. 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 And the architect, the same kind of description. We have solution architect that he's not allowed to uh, fix the code or to fix the tests. It's more high-level expertise on the project and designing things. So let's give it a try. Again, how it's going to work? Let me just repeat it. We have the initial script Cloudy MD, which will be loaded automatically, and this will set the uh, model to specific uh, behavior. And it will force model to uh, go this instructions list to go step by step from one to two, three, four, five, and defining the roles, asking the user, and loading the context from the roles. And after that, our model will be really prepared to operate in this specific section session in the way that you need it, that you wanted it to do. Right. So let's give it a try at the end. I'm opening back the terminal, and we need a new session. So I'm closing this one. And open a new one. So we're still here, nothing happened, right? We, we see this load project memory, and this was about loading the cloud MD file. But nothing happens because we need to trigger the conversation somehow. And it could be whatever, like, hi, cloudy, how do you do? Uh, it's a nice day, I just writing hi. And let's check what's happening. And see, it says, hello, I help you with the task manager. I found three available roles, and this is architect, developer, and QA specialist. And please enter the number of the role you'd like me to adopt to this session. Well, I'm typing mistakenly number six, just to double check it, how it works. And it says, OK, I'm sorry, but number six is not a valid selection. I only found three available roles. All right, then let's take QA specialist. And then what's happening next? It reads the role definition. You can see if it's from uh, roles, QA, specialist, MD, and reads the project rules as well. So it's combining them all together. And then uh, the model is set up. And OK, it says, I'm now ready to assist you as QA and integration specialist. And I will focus on writing and improving tests, identifying test coverage gaps, and providing testability feedbacks. And so we are ready to start. And how can I help with testing the task manager application today? So we are ready. We are prepared. And just to have a smoke test, let's, let's, let's see if it's really a QA specialist. What I'm going to do, I'm going to ask it to modify something from the production code. Let's say create task request. This is a production code. It's, uh, it's a record. And I will say something like And I'm asking add a new property string address to the class create task request, this one. And this is purely production code. And I'm asking, do, I'm, I'm asking to do this QA specialist, which is completely wrong because he or she should not be allowed to do this. And it found the file. See, uh, it was source main Java. So it's, it's production task manager DTO create task. And it says, I see that you'd like to add a new address while I can't make this change myself as a QA specialist, I'm restricted from a defined production code. I can provide the following testing consideration for whatever implementing this change. So it's even initiative is here, right? It's not only saying that SORM is allowed, it, it, it gives you some ideas how it can help from QA perspective. And it finishes with, would you like me to identify the specific test files that would need updates after this change? So that's there and it's working. That's nice. All right, I guess that's it for today's session. I really hope that you found it very interesting and maybe 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 more useful for you because it's really changed now. I can see that in many companies people start using AI and they're trying to to do something very useful with it and it's really hard because you don't understand you're all the time you're missing these rules and it's not clear how to proceed. And this is the way we came up recently, how you can create dynamic rules. Uh, you can save it in your repository. So it's available for everyone and kind of force all the developers uh, to this technique to pick the right role and then work in the scope of this role. And well, that's what it was gaining. And again, thank you for sticking with me till the end. I will see you next time in the next talk about AI.
see you and bye bye